The next thing I know is I'm being sold to someone and someone's buying me. I have no say. I'm getting whipped with belts. I'm getting kicked repeatedly. I have to make at least a thousand dollars a day. Just before I fell asleep or overdosed, I believe I remember hearing God's voice. Sorry. He told me that this isn't the end, that it's just the beginning for me. Human trafficking can be tough to notice. For most of us, we're unaware that it's happening in almost every community right across the country. Traffickers can maintain control over a victim in many different ways. It might be physical or psychological, through manipulation, threats, and the abuse of trust and power. Brooke experienced them all. I am falling head over heels over this guy because he's playing all the right moves. He's telling me, let's just be a dream team. Next thing I know, I'm working in a strip club and handing all my money over to him. And I'm having to work at the strip club from 9 in the morning until 5 p.m. and then have to post on Backpage from 5 p.m. till 6 in the morning. So I'm having three hours of sleep at most. I'm having extreme like chest pains. For nearly three years, Brooke suffered under the control of her pimp working the strip club during the day, and as a sex trade worker at night. She endured regular beatings, was branded, and forced to hand over any money she made. Hard drugs became a coping mechanism to try and numb the pain. Then at a breaking point, Brooke ran away, choosing a life of homelessness over a life with her captor. It was an unbearable existence, one that would eventually lead her to a life of addiction. I overdosed almost 20 times and I had to be narcan each time. <laughs> Once I ran away from the Gorilla Pimp, I had a bit of a Percocet addiction and I couldn't find them, so I tried heroin. I wasn't sure if I wanted to be alive anyways. I'm sleeping on the streets because I've screwed everyone over. And I just, I want to be saved. Like, all I want is to be saved. You don't want to use, but you're so sick. Like, and you, you can't take it. And then you can't sleep because of the flashbacks and the memories. Like, I still have flashbacks. Knowing that I'm on, like, a next, the next journey. I became addicted to a substance. In order for me to pay for that substance, I um, listened to some people that were in the trafficking world, and that's kind of how I uh, entered into it. For Lynn, it was a heavy addiction to fentanyl that led her into the sex trade industry. It was actually through a couple girls that I knew that were doing back page meet and greets. They realized that I was someone that could easily make them money. So I would go to a hotel room with them and they would take phone calls and that's kind of how it started. But there was never enough money to satisfy the drug habit. That's when Lynn decided she could navigate the industry on her own. If I could do it on my own, I could make more money and I could feed this habit um, of mine and not have to worry about, you know, where my money's going or paying other people to kind of pimp me out. Um, so I got comfortable staying at the hotels and paying for my stay there. Was it dangerous for you? It was dangerous for me. One particular time, it was very dangerous for me. And um, that's when it stopped for me too. I didn't think I was gonna leave this place alive. Fearing that she was just one encounter away from losing her life, Lynn walked away from the trafficking world, but the drug habit remained. I found myself um, sleeping in donation bins where people would donate their clothes. I would crawl into one of those bins and spend the night or two because I was safe and warm. I just happened to go to a McDonald's one night and I overdosed in the McDonald's bathroom. Just before I fell asleep or overdosed, I believe I remember hearing God's voice. Sorry. And um, he told me that this isn't the end, that it's just the beginning for me. And then I remember being woken up by the police and I was running on some warrants. So I got arrested and I went to jail and I cleaned myself up. So it was an overdose that changed everything for me. So the girls that come, a lot of them are unable to look after themselves. Their lives are unmanageable 
because of addiction issues. Maggie Barato is the director of Father's Heart Healing Ministries, Amen. an organization supported by Crossroads that operates two programs for women, exiting human trafficking, the sex trade, and addiction. The Beauty for Ashes Transformation House, which is Bath for short, is a safe house for women who are specifically exiting human trafficking, the sex trade, and addiction. So it's a three-month um, stabilization program at an actual residence with a range of staff and therapeutic programming. And the Oil of Joy Transitional Housing is sort of the second stage housing. So a lot of the women who come to Bath for three months, they end up going into the Oil of Joy supportive housing. So we offer apartments, housing, for women to live long-term, one year to two years, and they're supported by the programming. So they can learn to live out freedom, learn to live trauma-free, without addiction, and just really become part of a community. <laughs> Within this safe space, these young women begin to transform their lives, but it is not always easy. I went deep, deep down into being addicted to heroin. I went to rehab and then I went to a really good program too, And but I left three times. I couldn't do it till I was ready. And then when I was at the other program, I managed to stay sober for a couple years, but I like always felt like I was homesick for like a place that doesn't exist. And like I had this void inside of me. And now today I realize it was God. That was what was missing. So coming here, it feels like, like I'm at home. I couldn't do it without God. For Lynn, this is her second time in the program. Now sober for over two years, she says the Oil of Joy Transitional House has changed her life. The first time, I was influenced a little bit by other people. The second time, first of all, I was missing my relationship with God because I'd been away from Him for three years. And second was, um, that I'm ready to do this on my own, that I know that my life is much more than what it was. He has a purpose for me and it's, it's his will, not mine. So I was doing what I was doing and running rampant and my life wasn't working. Because he's got a, a greater plan for me and a path for me, I felt like it was time for me to get on that road, get on that path. So Lord, we just thank you for Such transformative changes take time and prayer. That's why an inner healing prayer ministry, referred to as intensive care, is at the core of the program. Sessions deal with deeply rooted issues, such as addiction, trauma, and depression, while providing a safe place for clients to receive healing for their heart and soul. Today, they're just, it's amazing the healing that has taken place, the inner deep, deep inner healing that has taken place in each one of them. They're, um, they have goals now for the future, there, uh, there's so much of peace. There's people watching this interview who have been exploited themselves, even mm -hmm. if it's not trafficking in different ways, men and women who've suffered abuse. Mm -hmm. What hope would you give them about the possibility of healing? It's possible, and if I can do it, anyone can do it. This program has helped change my life. It's absolutely possible to heal. The biggest part was having God as well. He's a, he's a God of healing. It just gave me a reason to wake up. It gave me a purpose to want to carry on with life. We're going to ask people watching this interview to support this program. So if you could talk to the people who are thinking, hmm, should I support Bath? Is this a good thing? What would you say to them? do it. <laughs> Definitely. It's a great thing. There's so many people out there that need that help. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.